Hello and welcome to an overclocking tutorial for the Gigabyte G1 Sniper C97 motherboard. First of all, enter the BIOS by pressing the delete key. You should end up in this overview and I recommend to use the classic mode, so press F2. And this is the classic mode. So our goal is today to overclock this CPU to 4300 MHz. If you go to system info, you can see uh, the G1 Sniper C97 and the BIOS version F7. If you go to MIT and check the current status, you can see I'm using i7-4690K CPU, which has a stock clock of 3.5 GHz. You can also see that I'm using two memory modules with 4 GB each, so 8 GB in total. Alright, let's go back and let's go to the advanced frequency settings first. Change this one to manual, so the, ba the base clock is set to 100 and set this one to 43. This will result in a, with a multiplied with a B clock, it will result in 4300 MHz. If you now go to advanced CPU core settings, scroll down and disable the turbo boost. Otherwise, it might be that your, system, uh, your CPU is locked and cannot clock that high or is limited by the TDP, the power consumption. So, I also recommend to disable the C-states, which are pa basically power saving features, uh, which could cause your CPU to clock down in idle or also stop clocking so high, co could cause instabilities. So, I rec recommend to disable those. Leave the thermal monitor enabled because this is protecting your CPU and also disable the ICE function, which is also called Intel Speed Step. All right, now go back. And another very important thing is the extreme memory profile, the XMP. This sets all the memory co settings correctly, which are programmed on a little chip on your memory module. So if you select this one and select profile one, you can see the correct rating of my DDR3 modules is 2400 MHz. And you can see on auto it was only 1600. So, and the next step would be to go to the voltages. So, if you go to CPU core voltage, you can see an overview of all the voltages which are supplied from basically from the motherboard to your CPU. And you can also see the stock values on the left side. For the CPU we are in external override, we set this one to 1.8. We just use the stock value. The CPU V core is the core voltage and if you want to clock higher you have to increase this one. So we set this one to 1.25 for now which should be safe and not result in very high temperatures and it should work for 4300 MHz on almost all the CPUs. You can also set the CPU ring voltage to 1.05. Everything else, the system agent and the dig digital I.O. and analog I.O. voltages are only for memory and should be set correctly by the XMP as well. All right, that's actually about it. There's not nothing else you have to do now. Press F10 to save settings and go. Okay, so after entering Windows, you basically need three tools. You need Core Temp, CPU-Z and Prime95. Let's take a look at CPU-Z first. This tool will show you all the details of your system. You can see the i5-4690K CPU and it's running at 1.25 volt, which we set earlier in the BIOS. You can also see the core speed, which is around 4300 MHz now. If you click right here, you can see the frequency is present on all cores. And if you click on mainboard, you can see the G1 Sniper C97 motherboard and you can see the BIOS version F7. If you click on memory, you can see I'm using 8GB of DDR3 memory running in dual channel. And you can also see the memory speed, which is at 1200 MHz, which equals 2400 because of DDR, which means double data rate. The north bridge frequency here is also the cache ratio or the uncore ratio, which we didn't really touch in the BIOS. You could increase that as, as well. This could give you a little bit of performance boost, but it doesn't really help. That's why I left it at 3.5 for now. Okay, so next tool is core temp. By the way, if you need the tools, you can download them in the description. Everything is put in there. Just click on the detailed uh, link of the motherboard overclocking guide and then you will find all the screenshots of the, of the BIOS and all the download information. 
Okay, so Core Temp will also give you some basic details of the CPU again, core voltage and also the CPU core temperatures, which are really important. That's why we need this tool. Okay, Prime95 is basically a stability test tool. We will run this one for around one hour. So to test, select custom, minimum FFT, set this one 1344 and max FFT also 1344 and check run FFTs in place. Now you can see the temperature will drastically increase and you should keep, should keep this test running for about one hour. If it doesn't crash one hour, then you can start playtime games and it's qu quite stable and you could be safe that it's, it's, it's fairly good for gaming. If you have some crashes or blue screens, then you have not enough voltages to keep your uh, CPU running at those clocks. You should always keep in mind that you should stay below 90 degrees here. So if you hit 90 degrees, your cooler is not strong enough. This means you have to go back to the BIOS and lower the core voltage. If, if it's like my scenario now, you'll probably end up at like 80 degrees, 82, something like this. And if it's still unstable, you can increase the core voltage a little bit, maybe like 1.270 and try again. Just make sure you always stay below 90 degrees and then you're good. If this is stable, you could easy, you could also go back to the BIOS and try 44 instead of 43 and run it 4.4 gigahertz. That's how you can push it further. All right. So if you have any more questions or problems, just let me know in the comments and I will help you out.